Every now and then, it's nice to do something just a little bit different to what you usually find yourself doing. Uh, I think it's easy to end up stuck in a rut and kind of doing the same thing over and over, and we're probably all guilty of that at some point or another. I know I certainly am. So just recently, I've started making a few changes uh, to the capabilities that I've got for performing astronomy. So uh, I recently bought the new Mead LX200, well, new to me. Anyway, that's going to allow me to do more planetary and lunar astrophotography and things. But tr I think truly, currently, my heart does still lie with deep sky. I always get a kick out of it and I love doing it. But there are an ever-decreasing list of things that I could do to change things up. So just recently, uh, I was basically inspired to undertake something I've never done before with deep sky. And that is a mosaic, would you believe it? Out of all the years that I've been into deep sky astronomy, I've never actually done one, but uh, I watched a video recently from Glenn, Astro Bloke, if you guys watch him, and uh, it was basically using Nina to frame up and perform a mosaic sequence. And um, it was kind of that that set the ball rolling in my mind, and I thought to myself, maybe uh, this is the next step for me, and I should try doing something like this. Maybe I'll really enjoy it. Maybe I'll hate it and never want to do it again, but I'll never know unless I give it a go. So uh, that's what we're doing today, basically. So welcome to this video. This is going to be my first ever attempt at a mosaic. And uh, we're just going to find out together how it goes, basically. I've already got a target in mind picked out. And uh, I took a little bit of time just the other day while it was cloudy to uh, make a new sequence on Nina and get this thing ready to actually be shot. Um, and it's the Elephant's Trunk Nebula, basically. Uh, it's a beautiful target, probably many of you are familiar with it, but I'm a little bit guilty of never giving this one the time it actually deserves, I would say. Uh, Chloe took a really beautiful shot of it last year using a Red Cat 51 and ASI 1600mm Pro. And I'd like to kind of take something along those lines ideally but the difference is i'm going to be using the celestron rasa and a one shot color camera from player one astronomy the uranus c now to kind of take a photograph of this object as it's a, uh, a nebula an emission nebula uh, i am going to be using the idas nbz uhs filter that's a filter designed for ultra fast telescopes like the rasa is it's f2 and uh, i think these two have proven themselves to be a really good pairing so far as I've taken a lot of images that I would probably class as personal bests and I've been very uh, happy with them on the whole. Now, I don't really know how this is gonna go. I don't know if it's gonna be a complete fail. Um, as I said, I was inspired initially to do this by Glenn uh, and his video showed me some of the initial steps as I really had no idea how to set one of these things up uh, in Nina at least, because I'm still quite new to that software. Um, and then also Pat Prokop from uh, Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. He had a great video showing how to set up a mosaic too. So uh, I watched that and between the two, I feel like I'm ready to actually do this now. So without any more waffling on in your ears and boring you to death, uh, I'm gonna go ahead on this first night. Uh, we have actually got, I think five clear nights planned ahead and I hope to make the use of all of them for this project. I'm going to go ahead now and get the roof rolled off this place and uh, make a start on this first night of data. All right, guys, so I wanted to catch up with you now. The roof is all rolled off and we're actually underway. Everything's uh, already off to a swimmingly good start by the look of things. So in the very first initial stages, right after watching Glenn's video, Pat's video, and getting inspired to undertake a mosaic, 
I decided to use something I'm really familiar with, so that's Telescopius here. I've got all of my gear plugged into this thing, all my cameras. Um, I know my camera's rotation, so it's currently set to 90 degrees on the rasa there. So I was able to enter everything and just kind of mock up this sort of view. So you can see you can freely move it around to any part of the sky you want. And uh, for me, this was a really great tool because it just... It's hands-on and uh, it's, it makes visualizing what you're actually going to take a photograph of quite a lot easier than uh, than some software, let's say. I'll just leave it at that. But basically, as you can see, I settled on a 4x1 mosaic. Now, uh, I did that because, my, as I said, my camera's rotated to 90 degrees. So having four panels like that with a strong overlap, that came at Pat's recommendation, a 30% panel overlap. Uh, gives me almost a 16 by 9 frame like uh, as you can see on the screen over here Which is gonna look hopefully good when presented uh, with all of you You guys out there on the screen like this um, Other formats might have came out a little bit weird and I'm having to kind of crop the top and bottom off and then you Kind of losing the reason for making the mosaic in the first place at least for me from this uh, from this content creation viewpoint. Now, uh, as far as I understand it with mosaics, the sky is the limit. You can literally go right from making the most basic type of mosaic, be that a, uh, excuse me, a two by one, uh, all the way up to maybe a, a 10 by 10 panel mosaic or something huge like that, you know, a hundred panels. If you want to spend all year taking one image, uh, which is totally valid if that's what floats your boat. Now, for me, I'm just from, probably gonna keep it simple like this just four panels as my first ever one and hopefully it all goes well uh, I did like that recommendation that Pat said you know the increased overlap as it does make a lot of sense it's gonna give me uh, plenty of breathing room uh, in between these panels so uh, hopefully everything should be able to be aligned up and there'll be no gaps left or anything like that which would be an absolute just a nightmare for me to deal with um, Here's how it's set up anyway, so I, I didn't use Telescopius for coordinates or anything like that. I just literally just used it for visualizing and making sure I was happy with the target selection and the mosaic type. So uh, that's how it's going to fall in there. Now for the actual planning of the mosaic itself, as you can see, we're underway already in Nina. Um, I just used the framing wizard, basically. So I loaded up the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. Uh, Loaded it into the view there on the right and just put in those same panels as I just described on uh, Telescopius there. Made it so it was a 4x1. Added that to the sequencer. And then from within the sequencer, I set up each panel like this. So you can see it's got a uh, IC 1396 panel 1, panel 2, panel 3 and panel 4 all set up. And for each of those panels, uh, I initiated the fact that it's going to do a slew to the target, centering the target, starting the guiding. And... This is probably not optimal, but I also told it to do an autofocus on uh, restarting each panel too. Uh, again, probably not optimal, but it doesn't take very long, so it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, as you can see, I'm taking six frames per panel at 300 seconds each, so 30 minutes. And uh, I'm differing every second exposure, so uh, that hopefully should work out quite well. I could probably get away also without dithering um, as the natural misalignment between these panels once it moves to the next one and then I restart the whole thing and go back uh, to panel one again let's say they won't line up perfectly anyway so that's going to introduce a level of dither um, but I just thought to be safe you know better to be safe than sorry so why not do it this is a different type of imaging and I'm going to treat it as such so I'm not going to sit here kind of watching this like a hawk or anything like that because that's just not what it's designed for I don't think um, it's sort of a set it and forget it uh, arrangement that you've got going on right now so uh, that's what I'm going to do um, I'm basically just going to enjoy doing anything other than watching this screen for a few hours and just generally just keep, like keep my eyes off it maybe check in every now and again and see how that goes again it's something different and uh you know, I think I probably am going to enjoy that. It's going to leave me with a lot of time to do other things, uh, such as recording like this. Which is probably bad news for you guys, because uh, I, I am known to waffle on a little bit. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is basically what my night is going to entail. And in fact, my next few nights, uh, if the weather forecast holds, 
I'm going to take as much data as I possibly can on this one over the course of this little clay spell and uh, bring you the best image that I can. So, uh, we're probably going to catch up a little bit later on in the evening, guys, and then we'll go from there. So, uh, yeah, cue the time lapse. Well guys, here we are at five minutes to three actually in the morning. Uh, so around about, I think if I'll just check this now, around about 40 minutes or so before the end of the session. So just enough time roughly to finish this last two, uh, two panels here. Now, how has tonight gone? So uh, it's been a weird one. Like nothing's like noteworthy has happened, of course. But I mean, just from my perspective, I'm uh, definitely guilty of spending too much time overanalyzing, kind of watching the screen like this and looking for anything going wrong and uh, things like that. And I really don't need to, you know. It's just one of those things that I do and uh, I don't know why. I could do getting out of the habit because I have actually really enjoyed myself tonight. Um, as I said, I've tried to keep hands off and just let it do its own thing, uh, which has been weird uh but also really nice because i've spent the rest of the evening uh playing games and stuff you know something else i really enjoyed doing so uh why not combine two things that i enjoy and maximize uh maximize my time like that it feels pretty damn good so um anyway uh having all this extra time on my hands has put me in a little bit of a reflective mood to be honest um as today, a pretty big milestone, which is 7,000 subscribers on this channel. And uh, it's, I can't thank myself for it because it's all down to you guys. I just put the videos out there. And uh, it's thanks to your reception to them, the fact that you've been watching them, liking them, commenting, subscribing, all these things that you do that really helps my uh, my channel grow and uh, I don't know it, I'm making a mess of explaining how grateful I am about this because it's gave me a voice that I otherwise wouldn't have had being able to speak to other like-minded people like this and uh, I'm very privileged to be able to put out my videos out there and have them be watched like this uh, and communicate with so many other people um, I just I, I really am grateful and I wanted to let you all know that. So uh, onwards and upwards. I mean, things seem to be going well. And I hope that long may they do so. Because uh, I'm having a ball with YouTube and astronomy in general. And most of all, just being part of this whole thing. You know, it's really good. It's really positive. It feels fantastic. So thank you. Uh, genuinely I mean that thank you to each and every one of you out there now most of the rest of the week is probably gonna look just like this so I am gonna wrap things up now and uh, leave it round about there before I get too soppy on you all um, but yeah <laughs> basically thank you so much for watching uh, I look forward to seeing what I can do with this data and uh, I look forward to presenting it to you out there and seeing what you guys think too so, uh, until next time, look after yourselves as always, and uh, clear skies. <laughs>